Um, so maybe you've just been promoted into a new job or you've been uh, transferred to a different team or you're like starting in a new company but um, this is just a video about some of the things that you should do in your first 90 days um, as a new manager to make sure that you set the tone right, get off to a good start and more importantly kind of get that team behind you. Uh, so the first thing you should do is have a very clear 90 day plan and you might have heard these or first 100 day plan uh, politicians often use them when they're kind of new into office but it's just setting out the things in your head that you would want to get done in the first 100 days and what i'd say is don't try and change too much i think sometimes when we're keen and we're like want to impress and want to get into a new job there's kind of a tendency to get in and like start doing loads of stuff straight away but actually that could be counterproductive a because you need time to build other relationships in your team and take them with you but also so if you try and do too much too quickly then you might end up dropping a few balls which again isn't going to set you in good status with your team so just set out over like a 90 day or 100 day period what are the things that you want to accomplish and then build that into a reasonable time frame so don't try and do it all in the first couple of weeks and in fact i'm going to talk to you about some other things in the video that i think you should do but like just try and like pace yourself it's going to be like a marathon not a sprint so don't try and go off with a big bang and kind of do everything at once the second thing which might sound quite horrible but is perhaps not everyone in your team is going to be delighted at your appointment and i had this when i took over a team when the person who had been acting up into my job that i had just had got um also went for it and kind of was unsuccessful at interview now i didn't know any of this walking into the job um obviously it would have been great if someone could give me a heads up but just it's just a lesson in fact that not everyone's going to be delighted to see you and you might need to spend some extra time working on relationships and bringing some people around who either um are kind of a bit annoyed that you've been um appointed into that role or think that they would have done a better job or that sam would have done a better job um, so just think about it in terms of not everyone's going to be delighted the day you walk in. The next thing is about reading the room. So what I would do is set up a couple of group like either meetings or exercises just so you can see everyone operating together. And then you get to start to see a kind of an understanding of the dynamics and perhaps who are the stronger characters in the team, who are the quieter characters, uh, any potential like in jokes or kind of in like assumptions that are kind of running in the team and just kind of get a feel for how they kind of the group dynamics are um, and then you can start to make notes of things that you perhaps want to change or the people you want to bring out to the fore a bit more but just trying to get an understanding of how that group is working already without your presence um, it's just useful for you to get an understanding of where they are and perhaps where they need to go. The next thing I would do is set up a series of one-to-ones with each person. And again, this might sound really obvious, but by spending an hour or so with each person individually, understanding like their background, where they've come from, what their current role is, what they like, what they don't like, what they'd like to change about their role, where they'd like to go in the future. You're just gonna get a really good sense of them as an individual, but it's also gonna help you build rapport with them and get a good connection. You know, much as we wanna approach this as a team thing, but treating everyone as an individual and making sure that we've not got a homogenous approach to managing everyone, understanding their kind of preferred styles, be it communication, how they like to be managed, will just set you again with good stead. A, it will show that you're interested in them as a person, but also it's just gonna mean that you don't have any own goals or drop the balls by doing something that's really obvious that could have been prevented. So just by having those set up, those one-to-ones, gonna take some time, but that's okay. Um, it's time well spent and like it will help you um, build the team in the future. The next thing I would do is um, set up a fun activity for your team. So it might be something kind of a bit more social, a team day, or just a different way of working off site, or kind of um, if you're all working virtually, perhaps sending like hampers or puzzles or something to their house, just to kind of inject a bit of fun um, and also show that you're quite a different kind of leader or a different kind of manager, and you're going to be bringing fresh ideas to it. So just kind of mixing it up a little bit, particularly if it's a very well established team, could be a really good thing. And particularly if you can inject more fun or some sort of social activity into it again it's just going to show and um, bring up their kind of good hormones with you and their endorphins and it's going to help enforce a positive image of you now all of those things are probably going to happen in the first 30 to like 45 days but after that is when you want to start establishing your ways of working um, and how uh, you want the team to kind of grow and develop going forward so the next thing you should do is set out some common values um, that might be in things that the team's trying to achieve. It might be in the ways that you want to work together. It might be in the ways that you want to work with other departments, but just setting up a kind of sense of where the team is going, setting a direction, and the values with which you want to work with are really important. So for me, it'd be about trust, it'd be about openness, it'd be about transparency. And we 
talk about how we would demonstrate those things and what those values mean. So trying to get a group consensus about how we want to be seen as a team, how we want to work as a team, um, and how we kind of want to have our dynamics with each other, will again start to set a, a clean slate, but also allow you to embed good practices from early on. Linked to that, but more detailed, is setting up about communication lines. So talk to the team about how often we want to have team meetings, how often do we want to have one-to-ones. Outside of that, what's the best way to communicate with people? Is it Slack? Is it email? Is it phone calls? Is it messages? Is it face-to-face? -face? And just set up general kind of ways of working and you can set out your preferences. So, you know, I would say something like, you know, I'm not a very detail-orientated person, so don't expect to present me with loads of detail and then get an answer straight away. If you want something that's Need, requires a really detailed response then you're better off like sending me an email setting out what you need and then put, popping some time in my diary to have a face-to-face -face chat about it but you can start to set up those kind of communication lines and how you like to work and how you want the team to work and um, the other thing that I did in my current team is set up some operational meetings where we just talk about like the day-to-day -day and kind of obstacles and challenges and then we've set up a separate meeting to talk about strategic and developmental areas and it means that we're not trying to cover everything in one meeting and uh, people have a really clear idea about like what's a problem that just needs to go to the operational meeting and then what's something that happens to go to the strategic so operational meetings happen more regularly um, and often perhaps don't always have partners at them um, but the strategic always have partners happens kind of like once a month and we talk about the more strategic elements of where the team is going so it's just helped the team to break down kind of what's a day-to-day -day problem and what's a longer term issue um, and has just allowed us to be more effective when we get together to talk about the right things at the right time. The next thing after you've kind of read the room and understand what, where the team's at is to celebrate some of their key accomplishments. So start to bring out people's talents and achievements in those kind of group settings, um, just so that you can show that you're starting to recognise and acknowledge when people are doing a good job or where they've done something particularly well. And that allows you to set a culture just of recognition um, and celebrating everyone's achievements. Sometimes in teams, we can get a bit of a dynamic where there's like lots of in jokes and like banter and stuff, but it's not very supportive or positive. But if you can start to celebrate people's wins and um, celebrate the team's wins, it just starts to create some of that feel good culture that you want to establish. The next thing I would look to do as a new manager is look for any quick wins there are. So if during your one-to-ones or the kind of the group tasks or the group meetings, you've identified some things which are really quick to solve and would make everyone's either life more enjoyable or um, less stressful, um, then absolutely do those first. So if it's something quite simple that you have the power to resolve or change, then absolutely I would knock a few of those quick wins off. That helps you to show your team that you mean business, you're there to help, but also that you can start to resolve some of the issues which might have been lingering in the team for a while. So once you've kind of understood where the team's at, look at those kind of quick wins that you can do and make sure that you knock a couple off. Next thing I do is, especially if you're in a team which operates in a much larger organisation or has like a number of key stakeholders, is I would get feedback from those other departments about what they think about your team. Because there may be some sort of blind spots that your team hasn't kind of acknowledged or some real kind of things that you can change which are going to help build the recognition of your team and make them seen as more effective by the rest of the organisation. And that's going to have a really positive effect for you as a leader because that will show that you're able to take on feedback and also improve your team, which is a key thing that like, leaders do. But that also um, it allows the rest of the organisation to start to feel more comfortable and more confident in your team and their abilities, which again is going to, only going to have good repercussions both for yourself, but also for your team members who then might start to be invited on different projects or different opportunities because they're seen as a high performing team. So the final thing then I would do is at the end of that 90 day, day period is set some longer term goals for your team. And I would get your team involved in this, um, perhaps a kind of sometimes at the end of a quarter or the end of a financial year is a good point to do this. Um, but if not, use that end of the 90 days and set some longer term goals for your team. So that might be things you want to achieve over the next six, 12 or 18 months. It might be about how you want to grow the team in terms of people, um, people and projects, or it might be about how you want to improve a certain type of working practice or get new software. But something that's going to help move the team forward um, and drive better performance but perhaps isn't something you can do under that quick win banner. So I would set those longer term goals so that everyone in the team has got a clear vision of what they're trying to work to um, and as also you as a leader have set out um, how you want the team to develop which you can then trickle down to individuals on their one-to-ones and their objectives but they've got that collective view of what the team is trying to achieve. And more often than not, that's where teams fall down is because everyone's got kind of their own objectives or their own passion projects, but they haven't agreed this collective 
collective vision of what we're trying to achieve as a team. So you might have people innocently working against each other or not all working towards a collective goal. But the, you know, the strength of a team is when you've got a clear vision and everybody's working towards that. So I would definitely do that towards the end of the 90 days and um, once you've had enough information about how your team's perceived, what the strengths and weaknesses are of your team, what the development areas are, like what are some of the problems they might have encountered. So you've got a kind of rounded information base and then you can set those goals to move you forward. Hopefully the first 90 days have gone really well and you've kind of smashed it and then that's also a time for you to get some feedback from the team um, and perhaps others above you, a boss, sort of um, people who are on your level but in other departments and just get uh, insight from them about how they um, think the first three months have gone and anything else you, that you could do differently and that's important for two reasons. Firstly it opens up the dialogue that you're interested and invested in getting positive feedback or not necessarily positive feedback, but just you know feedback on a positive basis. Um, and that means that people feel more comfortable coming to you with problems or issues, but also see that you're genuinely trying to do something for the, for the good of the team. So I would get some of that positive feedback if you can, or if it's negative feedback, think about how you can change that. Um, but by having that kind of 360 process to feedback, it's just gonna allow you to spot any kind of weaknesses you've got or any blind spots. Um, when I was early on in my management career, I assumed that everyone wanted to be managed by like me, and I have quite a laissez-faire kind of attitude. I like to be left alone. Whereas some people really want like much more detailed direction or a much closer framework. So by opening up that dialogue about feedback from them in the first 90 days, you're just gonna be able to kind of close those gaps between perhaps your natural management style and what they really need. So just be open to that kind of feedback, and then hopefully it'll set you up for a really good rest of the career with that firm or rest of the career with that team. Um, and then also start to think for yourself about how you want to grow and develop using the, the department goals, but also where your next step is in the career and how you can best get there. I'm Liz, thanks for listening to my video. Um, on my channel we talk about uh, leadership and management and you know, essentially I just want people to feel more confident in their careers and get this tips, tricks and hacks to help them navigate those challenges. So if you'd like anything specific to be covered in the next video, please pop it in the chat. If not, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.